Hi right, dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome uh, to the Sunday edition of the Cricket Happening Show with your host Ram. Well, uh, as far as uh, this uh, Cricket Happening Show is concerned, yes, congratulations to Australia for uh, going one zip in the one day series uh, by humbling England uh, by a huge margin of 300 and uh, I think it was 361 runs if I am not wrong, no it was 381 runs victory. So that's so congratulations to, uh, congratulations to the Aussies. It was expected, but uh, it was only a matter of whether England would survive one more day. But even though uh, there were some hailstorms uh, the Gabba ground I mean, in Brisbane in Queensland, uh, but still uh, Australian uh, bowlers uh, managed to actually uh, wipe out England uh, and go on to a very very uh, historic win there. Because uh, reason being that Australia. Um, have uh, got uh, seven defeats. Uh, it's uh, qu quite a long time since Australia won a test match uh, after uh, having seven defeats. Uh, so finally managed to clinch this one. So that was a stupendous performance from Australia. Uh, well, uh, that is as far as the first test is concerned. Also, there is congratulations uh, to, the, uh, to Afghanistan and Ireland uh, who today, after winning their respective matches, have confirmed their places uh, for the uh, T20 uh, tournament, the World, uh, the T20 World Cup, which is coming up in Bangladesh. So both have actually confirmed their places here uh, in the T20 World Cup. So congratulations to both of them. Uh, but Afghanistan, a special congratulations to them because uh, they have been the ones uh, who have been on a very very consistent note now, uh, taking part uh, in every T20 World Cup that is being played. So uh, that's a special congratulations going to the Afghanistan cricket team. Well, the other thing that I will be looking at today is the second one day international uh, where uh, West Indies um, uh, put it across India in the second uh, one day international here uh, at uh, Vishakhapatnam by winning the match by, uh, by a margin, I mean they won the match by two wickets uh, even though the uh, victory uh, was not uh, very easy to come by uh, but uh, yes it definitely took an effort from the man of the match uh, Dan Sami uh, and Lendl Simmons to really really uh, pilot the uh, West Indian innings and that's what they precisely did. Uh, we'll also talk about the, the first one day international uh, which was played between South Africa and Pakistan today, New Orleans and Cape Town and well the heroes were the debutants. Uh, in fact it was um, a Bilawal Bhatti uh, who has always always proved according to me of what I have little seen of him uh, whether it is T20 today was do both these debutants uh, were actually making their um, uh, international debut as far as one day internationals were concerned and uh, Bilawal Bhatti and Anwar Ali the debutants were the uh, heroes uh, for Pakistan uh, both in fact Anwar Ali uh, with, a, uh, with a performance with a bat uh, an unbeaten 43 or 55 balls uh, with six fours uh, and also picking up uh, two wickets for 24 runs of his uh, six overs was named man of the match so that would have been a great feeling for him on his one day international debut and not only that, um, Anwar Ali definitely got the man of the match, the reason being uh, he picked up two vital wickets, uh, that of uh, Jack Scalis, uh, his first uh, one-day international wicket, and what a woman that would have been. He was absolutely joyous, no doubt about that, and in fact, Anwar Ali also went on to pick up the, uh, pick up the wicket of the hard-hitting uh, David Miller, uh, who was uh, gone. That was a very important wicket, and that's the precise reason Anwar Ali got the man of the match. Let us talk about the other debutant, Bilawal Bhatti. Now Bilal Bhatti as I said, uh, of little I have seen of him, I think he is looking to be a perfect all-rounder and he has, uh, uh, he has a lot of variation in his bowling as far as batting is concerned. Uh, he showed that uh, in full measure today by slamming 39 of just 25 Elvis with 3 4s and 2 6s and not only that, he gave uh, admirable support to Anwar Ali in that 74 run partnership where, where um, in fact the reason that uh, Pakistan reached 218 was thanks in the main uh, to this uh, eight wicket partnership by the debutants which really really allowed Pakistan to save face and uh, definitely uh, that is what enabled uh, Pakistan to win the match because uh, that partnership was uh, 74 runs uh, which was added uh, probably we are looking at um, in uh, it was in uh, uh, basically if you, if you look at it uh, it is coming in um, I would say 70 deliveries. Uh, this uh, 74 runs was added in 70 deliveries by these both these debutants, and that's what enabled Pakistan uh, to finish uh, on a very very uh, on a, on a on a decent total of 218 for nine. Uh, and uh, well, as far as the uh, the other 
scores were concerned. Uh, Nasir Jam Shed uh, made uh, 24 of 46 balls with 1 4. Uh, Shahzad uh, making 33 of 70 balls with 3 4. Uh, 22, Muhammad Afiz made 5. Soed Maksud uh, hang, hung around, uh, un unfortunately, not really able to hit his strokes. Uh, for, uh, just, just talking about this Pakistan innings, uh, they, were, they were restricted to 218 for 9. But uh, let's look at the, uh, the, the South African bowling card, uh, which did a wonderful job uh, to have uh, the Pakistani innings on the ropes at 131 for 7. Uh, till such time, uh, this partnership from Bilawal Bhatti and Anwar Ali, both the debutants, uh, really carving the South African attack uh, to uh, take the score on to 205, that uh, 74 run partnership. Uh, I've already talked about Bilawal Bhatti, who really uh, hit some big sixes. He smoked uh, Markel over the fence for a six. Uh, Anwar Ali uh, decided to, uh, you know, uh, be more and more sedate and also looking at the loose opportunity to capitalize. We also saw some very good uh, strokes from, Bilav, uh, from Anwar Ali, which would have made any top batsman proud. Uh, and uh, this partnership um, was very important, considering the fact that uh, South African bowlers restricted Pakistan to 131 for 7 uh, with some splendid bowling. And this is the uh, world-class South African bowling attack, which was bowling with Dale Steen, 10 overs, 2 maidens, uh, three wickets for 33 runs. Also picked up the wicket of Mahmoud Afiz once more. Uh, Renan Philander 10 overs, 1 for 37. Economical spell there. Markel 10 overs, 3 for 39. Dumini none for 23 of 5. Imran Tahir, the leg spinner, 7 overs, 1 maiden, none for 30. And Jack Scalley's 8 overs, no maiden, 2 for 53. And Shahid Afridi contributed 26 of 25 balls uh, with, one four, with 23 balls of 1 4 and 1 6. But that was the reason uh, because of the debutants um, batting. Uh, the score actually reached 218, which was considered a decent total here. As far as South Africa were concerned, for South Africa, uh, they, they found the going a bit tough. Uh, but uh, what happened was there was a lot of wickets which was taken. The, the spinners were absolutely uh, pretty tight. Uh, Saeed Ajmal bowling 10 overs, no made in 228. Uh, 10 overs, 1 for 34 for Mohamed Afiz. Uh, and uh, Afridi 7 overs, no made in 1 for 34. Bilawal Bhatti did a good job, the debutant. 7.1 overs, no maiden, 37 runs and 3 wickets. They balled in the right areas. Uh, and uh, the pace ballers, Junaid Khan, 8 overs, 1 for 38. And Anwar Ali on his debut. As I said, he picked up the vital wickets of Jack Scalis, his uh, first one-day international wicket on his debut. Uh, and he also picked up the wicket of uh, David Miller um, uh, to actually get the South African innings. Uh, really, really, uh, there was not uh, much really talk about barring uh, Jack Scalis, who made his comeback and made it count uh, by... Uh, by batting very well and showing all his strokes uh, in full flow uh, with a knock of uh, 50 of 71 balls with 5 fours uh, and 1 6. Uh, 49 coming from Domini tried to hold the innings together but uh, unfortunately uh, even though the, the tailenders did their be bet like one on Philander, Dale Steen and Moni Markel with 14, 15 and 17 respectively that was really not enough and the South African innings wound up for 195 thus giving South, um, Pakistan a one nil, one nil lead in the in the three match series. So as the man of the match, as I said, went to Anwar Ali of Pakistan, and as I said, it, this would be known as the match for the debutants. This one day international goal is a match for the debutants. Uh, reason being, Bilawal Bhatti and Anwar Ali making their one day international debut did a splendid job for Pakistan. Well, let's go on to the second one day international between uh, India and West Indies now uh, and see what happened there. Uh, well, uh, this was played at Vishakhapatnam, as you know, Andhra Pradesh um, uh, had a Andhra Pradesh is the cap. I mean, is the uh, state there, and um, there was uh, definitely there was a storm over there. Uh, well, didn't really affect uh, this particular match in any serious way, but uh, the, the toss was very very important. And uh, well, West Indies were the ones who won the toss, and uh, and probably uh, West Indies had the feeling that you know dew might become a factor at the latter stages of innings. Uh, they decided that they would put India into bat. Uh, for India, uh, India mustered 288 for seven with uh, Virat Kohli uh, once again showing supreme touch uh, and uh, playing a wonderful knock but uh, missing his uh, fifth international century in 2013. Uh, he would have, I mean, as you know, Virat Kohli did it the last year, uh, but in 2012, but in 2013 missed upon that uh, by being out for 99 of 100 balls with 9 fours. Uh, today, Rahul Sharma made only 12 runs of 19 balls with 3 fours. Shikhar Dhawan uh, contributing 35 of 37 balls with 5 fours, 28 of the bat of Yuvraj Singh of 49 balls with 3 fours and 1 six. Shreyas Ryan of 23 of 24 with 2, uh, two fours. 
and uh, suddenly uh, the West Indies uh, at one stage uh, India were uh, uh, sailing smoothly uh, at uh, 100 and uh, 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 they, they were well placed at that one particular uh, time it, I think it was 194 uh, was the score at that stage in the 36th over and from that uh, from from that time on uh, suddenly everything started going West Indies way with uh, Ram Paul bowling economically uh, Jay uh, Sunil Narin the right arm a uh, spinner uh, bowling in a not only an economical manner but also really really allowing the batsman no liberties and Jason Holder also uh, joining in and uh, they did a fine job to actually get this innings uh, of India to they restricted India to 288 it's only because of uh, Dhoni's uh, captain Dhoni's uh, hefty blows uh, who made an unbeaten 51 of 40 deliveries with three fours and four sixes and Ashwin chipping in with 19 of 10 balls with two fours and one six really doing the trick in fact uh, my interesting Dhoni going on to really rearranged the figures of uh, Ravi Ram Paul by slamming him for four sixes uh, and Jason Holder was taken care of by Ravi Chandra and Ashwin. So 288 for seven on the board uh, for uh, India uh, and as far as the bowling figures were concerned just uh, four for 60 for Ram Paul who got some tap in the latter stages from uh, the Indian captain Mahindra Singh Dhoni. Uh, 10 was one for 63 for Jason Holder. Uh, 8 was none for 54 for uh, 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 Dran Bravo, uh, Dwayne Bravo. Uh, Permal bowling 1 for 55, Nareen very economical, none for 39, uh, Darren Sammy 1 overs 1 for 11, Simmons 1 over one, none for 5. As far as West Indies were concerned, given a target of 288 uh, to win from uh, 89 to win, uh, they didn't have a good start. They lost uh, Johnson Charles early for 12 uh, of 9 balls with 2 fours. Uh, Kiran Powell uh, played well uh, to make 59 of 70 balls with 7 fours and 1 six. Uh, Samuels looked good. Uh, with uh, two boundaries, but that was it for Mar Marlon Samuels. He was gone for eight, uh, and um, uh, uh, I mean, Darren Bravo was absolutely. Uh, it was it was some pristine touch from Darren Bravo. One of uh, all of the strokes that he played was resembling. It was looking like Ma um, like Brian Lara was batting. He was leaning into his drives and he was caressing the ball. And he was uh, that was a big wicket when he was uh, caught by Dhoni of the bowling of Ashwin for 50 or 54 balls with eight fours. Uh, Lendl Simmons and then this was the time when uh, Darren Bravo was gone the score was 185 for 5 and then uh, there was a partnership between Lendl Simmons and the captain uh, Dwayne Bravo but uh, in fact uh, uh, when Dwayne Bravo fell uh, with the, in the 35th over the score on 185 uh, it looked like West Indies uh, would uh, probably uh, have to really 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 pull out a rabbit uh, uh, from the uh, hat I suppose but uh, well it was all coming in with uh, Lendl Simmons being joined in by Darren Sammy and Darren Sammy what a knock he played uh, he really really uh, pierced the bowling uh, and uh, got some very good runs in fact some of his strokes of Darren Sammy uh, was absolutely a treat to watch uh, because he was, he was using dexterity he was using some great skills even the balls which were pitched outside the off stump he would, he would be in a position uh, to actually play the swivel stroke by putting it uh, through the onside boundary and he also hit some marvelous sixes as you know Sammy when he really strikes the ball it is absolutely it stays hit that's what he is it, it goes from the middle of the bat it traveled traveled and traveled and it went over the fence for a six so that was what Darren Sammy and Darren Sammy as, soon as, as far as Darren Sammy was there uh, West Indies would have definitely expected that yes he definitely definitely didn't disappoint the crowd here uh, by making an unbeaten 63 of 45 balls with four fours and four sixes to win the match but he got wonderful support from uh, Lendl Simmons uh, who contributed 62 of 74 balls with five fours and one six and even though there was a bit of a, a sort of a flutter uh, when uh, Mohamed Shami came in and picked up uh, two wickets uh, for the uh, two wickets for India in the same over uh, but um, uh, thankfully Darren Sami finished off the match with an unbeaten 63 of 45 balls with four fours and four sixes and uh, well uh, West Indies uh, finished at 289 for 8 the Indian bowling uh, well today uh, as I said uh, there was a bit of a disadvantage uh, but uh, the, the reason being the disadvantage was because of the due factor uh, the, the old balls were uh, changed a lot of times uh, and what it showed is that Ravi Chandra and Ashwin amidst all this even though bowling with the wet ball which is very very tough uh, he, he, he bowled uh, a superb spell of 10 overs, 1 minute and 237. As far as the other ballers were concerned, everybody received a tap. Uh, Bhuvneshwar Kumar, 9 overs, 2 for 56. 
Mohit Sharma one for 48 uh, didn't have a very good match. Uh, Mohamed Shami uh, today um, uh, one was uh, really looking at why Mahindra Singh Dhoni uh, did not actually use uh, Shami. He just gave one over to the new ball uh, and brought uh, Shami. In fact, he gave uh, all the other six overs that Mohamed Shami bowled was with the old ball. Probably Dhoni was experimenting something. Seven overs no man probably thought that uh, Mohamed Shami would be pretty effective with the old ball. But the uh, un unfortunate problem was that um, he could reverse swing the ball probably. But uh, Mohamed Shami, unfortunately, due to the due factor, uh, the ball couldn't be gripped properly, and Mohamed Shami struggled. 2 for 55 for him. Uh, Suresh Rana, 7 overs, none for 42, was costly. Jadeja, 10 overs, 1 minute, 1 for 44, also becoming, um, picking up his 50th wicket uh, in the year 2013. Now, uh, okay, let's, um, now, uh, let me shift off from here. As I said, uh, the match is all over. Um, uh, so now, India and West Indies have locked horns here. They are, the West Indies have leveled the series 1-1. Uh, with the third one day international coming in uh, at the Green Park uh, Stadium in Kanpur. Let's go to the first test of the Ashes series, which is the one which is the most important one. Well, as far as that is concerned, uh, well, uh, England started off with that overnight score yesterday. Uh, it was a mountain to climb, and that mountain, well, Alistair Cook, uh, the English captain, uh, did his bet uh, by staying in the middle, uh, really grinding out the Australian bowlers. He did his bet, uh, and he also played some very good. If you look at that knock, uh, that was what uh, the, everyone wanted. The England captain Alistair Cook contributed a uh, very good 65 uh, with uh, three, uh, three fours. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, Kevin Peterson, well, he was looking good. Kevin Peterson and Alistair Cook uh, were really, really taking the score along uh, before uh, Mitchell Johnson, uh, as I said, he was bowling with lots of um, uh, real, real pace and he was also getting the ball to bounce. So, in fact, he picked up Peterson with Peterson trying to flick Johnson, the ball going in the air and uh, Saberg, it was a short delivery from Johnson actually. And Kevin Peterson was snapped up by Sabak. And Sabak was a substitute fielder. Uh, he did a wonderful job by taking up that catch. And Kevin Peterson out for 26 with two fours. Uh, Ian Bell, well, he did his bit. He gave good company to, uh, to England. And for all, uh, England had to actually see of the day. Uh, this was the pair that could have done it. But uh, Ian Bell, after making 32, was caught behind of Siddle for 32 with uh, three fours. Uh, Joe Root uh, stuck it out with Cook for quite a long time uh, before Alistair Cook uh, after everything was going, I mean, there was a bit of an interruption uh, because of the hailstorms uh, sweeping uh, Queensland uh, in Brisbane. And then uh, once the, uh, the, uh, the interruption was over, when the match resumed, uh, suddenly, uh, even though England were doing a good job with all the players trying to occupy the crease and uh, try to grind out the Australian bowlers, but, uh, well, uh, they couldn't do it any further after that. After that, it was a real procession as Mitchell Johnson took the cherry and started hurling it with full pace and also nipping up wickets uh, in, a, in a pretty, pretty uh, successive manner. As uh, first, uh, Nathan Lyon was the one uh, who actually turned the ball with a ball, with a ball that turned and bounced and Alistair was gone, caught hand and bowl line for 65 with three fours. After that, uh, there was absolutely no respite in for England. England uh, were absolutely, uh, in the sense, uh, they were really bottled up by the Australians as uh, Matt Pryor was a goner, as Ma Nathan Lyon once again picked up the wicket of uh, Matt Pryor, uh, he was also gone with the ball that turned and bounced. He was got, caught one and bowled line for four. Uh, after that, uh, Broad uh, left in as Johnson this time picked up uh, three wickets now. First, he picked up the wicket of uh, Stuart Broad, uh, making him a fend at a delivery. He was gone, caught hand and bowled Johnson for four. Graham Swan uh, picked up a, a pair in this uh, test match. Uh, caught Smith, bowled Johnson again. A very, very unplayable delivery bowled by Johnson with his uh, pace and bounce. And then um, James Anderson was the last one out as he was, Johnson was the man who did it. Uh, and he was the man who got the Australians the victory by actually caught and bowl, uh, taking the catch of his own bowling uh, when Anderson was gone for two. Trendlett was a victim of Harris for seven. And thus the match ended with Australia going one up in the Ashes Test series with England being 179 all out. Uh, with uh, and, uh, and Australia registering a very, very uh, huge victory here by 381 runs. Looking at the bowling figures, uh, Mitchell Johnson, uh, what a changed, uh, uh, I mean, changed ball. You know, one, one knows that he, is, uh, he has really, really uh, hit his traps now, uh, which is good for Australian cricket. And Mitchell Johnson, uh, with that, um, with that um, moustache that he had, um, uh, he was uh, really looking uh, absolutely... Uh, in a, I'm, I'm looking a bit aggressive and he bowled his uh, quota of overs in a splendid manner in the sense uh, he did his job in a better manner as I said, bowled with lots of pace, lots of bounce 
and uh, there was a lot of verbals going on. Johnson was always speaking to the batsman, uh, and as I said yesterday, uh, Ashes Test series is not without banter, and that was the, precisely the case. 21.1 over seven maidens, 42 runs and five wickets for Mitchell Johnson. 19 overs, four maidens, two for 49 for Ryan Harris. Peter Sirill, 15 overs, three maidens, one for 25. Nathan Light did his job. 20 overs, two, six maidens, two for 46. Stephen Smith, five overs, one maiden, none for 15. Two overs, two maidens for Shane Watson. Mitchell Johnson, uh, for this uh, stupendous all-round performance, uh, got the man of the match. And Australia uh, have, I mean, they, they have a lot to thank uh, to Mitchell Johnson, not only with the bat, not only with the ball, but also with the bat. It was a stupendous all-round performance from Mitchell Johnson. And Mitchell Johnson, I'm sure, uh, will be uh, will be really, really uh, get. I mean, remembering this match for quite a long time because the first day he, in fact, he picked up the wickets. First, he picked up a four-wicket bag in the first innings. Then, a second, in the second innings, he picked up a, a, a five-wicket bag. Not only that, he also uh, did wonderfully with the bat, uh, uh, combining into two useful partnerships with uh, Brad Hannon in, in both innings. And uh, he was absolutely the man of the match. There's no doubt about it. It was a Mitchell Johnson test match, according to me. And well, dear fans and subscribers, uh, this is going to bring an end uh, to this cricket happening. So sorry, dear fans, uh, just because of a uh, short of time, uh, I had uh, three test matches, uh, three matches to cover. So I had to bottle up everything. And that was the best that I could give on this cricket happening show. Hope you all um, I would uh, really bear with me on this cricket happening show. Thanks for your company as always. And thanks for your tremendous support to this cricket happening show. Uh, your host Ram will take leave right now. But promising you that your next cricket happening show will be around tomorrow. Until then, it's goodbye on this Sunday. Thank you.